Welcome back to the Data Science Mentor, where I help you become an anchor as a data scientist. This is the second video in this series on getting started with Git and GitHub for data science. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up your GitHub account, just like a professional data scientist would. So let's do it. All right, well, unfortunately, Windows doesn't have Git installed by default. So if we start command prompt and run Git, we will get that the command is not recognized. So we will need to install an app or a tool that would install Git and enable us to run Git commands. This tool is Git Bash. So I'm gonna start my browser and Google Git Bash Windows. Click the result that says Git for Windows. And as you can read on the landing page, Git Bash provides an emulation layer for a Git command line experience. So we will click download, and this should download an executable file to install Git Bash. Once the executable file is downloaded, let's open it to start the installation wizard. Click Next, then select where you want Git to be installed. I'm just going to go with the default here. Actually, we should be fine if we select the default option for each step of this installation process. So click Next, click Next again, and Next, click Next. And here, make sure you have the second option selected, which should be the default. So click Next. Then we will go with the open SSL library option for HTTPS connections. So click next. Since we're using a Windows machine, we will use the Windows style option. So click next and click next. Yes, we want the default behavior of Git pull. So click next and click next. And finally click install. And now just sit back and relax and enjoy watching the installation process as it completes. Cool. Now to launch Git Bash, I will check this box, and you can keep the box to view the release notes checked if you wanna view the release notes, but I'm gonna uncheck it and then click Next, and this should launch Git Bash. Let me resize it and zoom in a little bit. And now unlike command prompt, if we run Git, you should see this help documentation on how to start using Git. And this means that Git is installed and is available for us to use. Cool. And now the first thing you want to do before you do anything is to configure your Git profile by setting your name and email address. While Git will try to configure these automatically, but it's a good practice to configure them yourself to make sure that the correct name and email address are shared with anyone you will be collaborating with in the future. All right. So to set your name, you're on git config dash dash global user.name and type whatever you want your name to be between quotes. And to set your email address, you run git config dash dash global user.email and type whatever email address you want to use between quotes. Cool. Now to start building your data science profile, you will need to create a repository on GitHub for each of your projects. So I'm going to switch back to my browser and open a new tab and go to github.com. Now, if you don't have an account yet, click on the sign up button here and then fill in a username, your email address and a password. You can check the box here if you wish to be contacted by GitHub for any product updates or offers. Then verify that you're not a spammer. And finally, click the button here to create your account. You will receive an email to verify your email address, so make sure that you do that before you proceed. And once you have your account created and your email address verified, log into your account. Now on the landing page, once you log in, on the top left here, you should see your repositories. But since I don't have any yet, then no repositories are showing here. Now to create a new repository, you can either click this green Create Repository button, 
or from the drop-down menu here, select New Repository. Both of these options should redirect you to this page where you will have to fill out a form to create the new repository. So first, you will need to give a name to the repository. Typically, you want the name to be descriptive of your project. Let's assume that you're working on a project to analyze some data on COVID-19. So let's name the repository COVID-19-analysis. Next, you will need to fill out the description field. Although it says optional, but I highly recommend that you fill it out in order to give people an idea of what the repository is about. So let's write something like this project aims to use historical data to explore COVID-19 and to build a model that can predict its future propagation. This is not what we will be doing, but just for demonstration purposes. All right, next, you can choose whether you want the repository to be public or private. If you'll be collaborating with other data scientists or other people on a project, or if your goal is to showcase your work to potential employers, then you want your repositories to be public. If you happen to work on a project where you sign an undisclosure agreement or an NDA, where you're not able to disclose the work that you're doing, then you want to select the private option for sure. But for us for now, let's go with public and make sure to check the box to initialize the repository with a readme file. The description field will automatically become part of the readme file as you will see in a minute. And so this is another reason why you should fill in the description field as this will reflect professionally on you. And finally, go ahead and click the button here to create the repository. And this is how the repository looks like. The name of the repository is on the top. The description is on the right here. Here you see all the files and folders in the repository. So far, we only have the readme file, but as we start adding files to the repository, they should appear here. And finally, the contents of the readme file are displayed at the bottom here. And so since the contents of the readme file take up most of the space on the main page of the repository, it is a good practice to populate the readme file with useful information to users. For example, you can add a detailed description of the repository or maybe even special instructions on how to replicate your work in case someone is interested in doing so. Cool, and this completes the process of creating a repository on GitHub. Now remember, the beauty of Git is being a distributed version control system. So let's create a local copy of this repository on our machine, which we will use to build our code and work on this project. And this remote copy on GitHub will serve as our backup on the cloud. Now the process of copying a repository is called cloning. And you can do that by clicking this green clone button here. As you can see, there are two options to clone a repository using SSH and using HTTPS. You can actually clone any public repository on GitHub using the HTTPS option. But as the owner of this repository and of this GitHub account, the proper way is to clone your repository with SSH because if you clone it with HTTPS, then every time you try to manipulate this remote repository, you will be prompted for your credentials, which can become super inconvenient. So cloning it with SSH is the proper way, but you won't be able to use SSH yet as you will need to link your machine to your GitHub account so that GitHub is able to authenticate you and know that it is you who's trying to make changes to your repositories. So to link your machine to your GitHub account, as this message says here, you will need to generate what's called an SSH key. So let's open a new tab and Google generate SSH key GitHub. Click the result that says generating a new SSH key and adding it to the SSH agent. And on this page, you should find the instructions on how to generate an SSH key. Since we're using a Windows machine, we make sure we're on the Windows tab. We already have a git bash terminal open. And now the command to generate the SSH key is this ssh-keygen command. So in the git bash terminal, you would run ssh-keygen to generate an authentication key. 
of type RSA and number of bytes 4096 using your email address as a label. Okay, so run this. And then when prompted to enter the file in which to save the key, just accept the default location, which will be in a hidden subdirectory called SSH in our home directory. So go ahead and hit enter. And when prompted to enter a passphrase, I would just leave this blank. So simply hit enter and hit enter again to confirm. Cool. And now a private public key pair has been generated. And now if you navigate into this SSH hidden subdirectory in your home directory and list its contents, you should find ID underscore RSA, which is the private key. And this you're not supposed to share with anyone. And ID underscore RSA dot pub, which is the public key. And this will be the key that you will add to your GitHub account. Now, another thing you need to do is to add the private key to the SSH agent in order for you to get automatically authenticated every time you communicate with your GitHub account to manipulate your remote repositories. So first, let's start the SSH agent. So let's copy this by selecting it and typing Control C, switch back to the Git bash terminal and in Git bash to paste, you can either type shift insert or right click and select paste from the pop-up menu. So let's select paste, but moving forward, I will just type shift insert to paste. Okay, and hit enter to run this. And finally, run the ssh-add command to add the private key to the SSH agent. So select this, type control C to copy, switch back to the git bash terminal, type shift insert to paste and hit enter to run. And now the last thing that's left is to add your SSH key to your GitHub account. So let's copy the public key. You can do that by running this clip command to copy the public key to the clipboard buffer. All right, let's switch back to GitHub, click your profile pic and select settings from the drop down menu. Then under personal settings, select SSH and GPG keys. Then click the green button to add a new SSH key to your account. Then paste the key in the key field. So type control V to paste it from the clipboard buffer. You still need to name it. It's good to use a name that describes the machine that's associated with the key. So if it's your personal computer, let's call it personal dash laptop and click the add SSH key button to complete the process of adding the SSH key to your GitHub account. Cool. Now note that this SSH key links your machine to your GitHub account and is not specific to the repository COVID-19 analysis that we created earlier. So you need to generate this SSH key and add it to your GitHub account only once. And now with this SSH key added to your GitHub account, GitHub would be confident that any manipulation of any of your repositories coming from your machine would be initiated by you. And with this, you should be all set to clone any repositories that you create using the SSH option. So let's go ahead and use the SSH option to clone the repository COVID-19 analysis that we created. Okay, so let's go back to the repository. So under your profile pic, select your repositories from the drop down menu, click COVID-19 analysis, click the green clone button again, Make sure you select the SSH option and copy the URL by clicking the copy icon. Okay, and now switch to the git bash terminal and navigate to the directory where you want the repository to sit. Now I recommend creating a directory called projects that houses all the projects that you plan to work on. So let's navigate to the desktop and then run mkdir projects to create a folder called projects and then navigate into this new directory and now clone the repository. So run git clone the repository URL. So shift insert to paste the repository URL and hit enter. And when prompted, if you want to continue, type yes and hit enter. And now if you run LS, you should see a local copy of the repository COVID-19 analysis appear inside projects.
Now, in the next video, I will demonstrate how we can use Git to manage and save our work as we start working on this project. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to get notified when I put up the next video. I'll see you next time.